Welcome to the Archive. In today's episode, we're doing a book review on How to Read a Book by Charles Van Doren and Mortimer J. Adler. Let us know in the comments if you've read the book. Tell us how you feel about it. If you haven't, there will be a link in the description below. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you can go and find that book. And if you're listening only, we'll also post the link on all of the platforms. With that, let's jump right in. So I guess the first question that comes to mind, and maybe it's coming to your mind too, as someone who actually hasn't read this book, me, <laughs> why would I read it if I already know how to read a book? <laughs> That's a really good question, man. So the majority of the critics online who say that this book is trash or whatever and vote one or two stars on Goodreads and Amazon.com haven't actually really read this book. Right. Um, it's not a book to teach you how to read elementary. Text. Right. It's not teaching you how to sound out the words or proper syntax and grammar. It's trying right. to give you a a way to read a book that you can retain information better. Right. So the whole process of the book, it, or the whole point of it, is to read better, mm -hmm. to be able to select readings more efficiently that are geared towards your interests. Without allocating so much time and investment to reading the entire thing. Exactly. Right? And um, to just gain an appreciation for reading books of all sorts, types and sizes and depths and difficulties. Mm -hmm. um, and also really just to... Just like, to, uh, yeah, I guess it's just to read better, to read so well. So before we get into like the meat and the bones of how they accomplish this, how would you say that this book has changed the way that you read and, and, what is, and how has it benefited your reading experience? So ever since I read this book, I think that my reading has improved. I've, you know, I've used the technique to build this library mm -hmm. even uh, that we're sitting in in, in the archive. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately... Again, okay, so just to start and jump into the meat and the bones of this mm -hmm. book, Mortimer Adler wrote this book around the time when audiobooks were first emerging in the technological marketplace. Okay. So everyone was super excited. Oh my goodness, like this is the first time I can drive my car to work and listen to a book at the same time. Mm -hmm. I, I can save so much time mm -hmm. and be so efficient uh, or just have entertainment or whatever. Right. So this is about the era in which he wrote this. Free right. internet. And we are going to do a union of opposites on audibles versus actually reading a book. So yeah. look out for that. Shout outs to the union of opposites segment. Uh, catch it above. So yeah, to jump right in, he wrote this book in order to help people read uh, better. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that he go, get, gets into is the, the three levels of reading or mm -hmm. the four types of reading, I suppose, in which in his opinion, in his system, you read a book three times and then you gain mastery over that book. And because this was written prior to the internet, no one could just go online and search up a book review and get you know, hundreds and hundreds of opinions to make their educated decision before jumping into that book. Right. This is pre-Spark Notes. Pre-Spark Notes. Right. So he gives a technique for entering into a library or picking a book off the shelf that looks interesting to you, determining what the book is, the type of book. Right. Moving next into sort of getting a taste for the book. Right. And then how to do a cursory level read. Can you explain to them what that looks like? Yeah. So the first thing that you would do in Adler's system, and by the way, we call this Adlering. Right. This technique of yeah, reading. Yeah, BJ was like, did you read that book? I was like, I Adlered it. Yeah, which is hilarious. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, so the first thing that you do is you pick the book up, you read the table of contents, you read the index, and you look for any names, terms, words that you recognize to right. see how prepared you already are to read this book. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of get a feel for what the book is about doing, you know, the table of contents as well. Right. And you can't do this with fiction, by the way. I think that's worth pointing out. Right. Again, and this book is more about learning to read better for understanding, not necessarily reading for entertainment. Right. Exactly. Um, although there is a section in which uh, Adler goes over reading great books of fiction, great literature, and for what purpose and how you should read it. Mm -hmm. But you start by doing that, and then you read the first few pages of every chapter, um, Which kind of gives you like the thesis of what's going to be unfolded in that chapter. Right. Or yeah. at the very least, you just kind of read the introduction. You kind of read the end of the book. You read some parts in the middle if you're pressed for time. But ultimately, you spend about 15 to 25 minutes with the book. So it's a really cursory skim. And at that point, you should know what the book is about and sort of what the arguments are in general. Mm -hmm. And you should know whether or not that's a book that you really want to ever visit again. Right. Um, Adler gives a great metaphor of tasting books or biting and chewing them or actually swallowing them and really and ingesting digesting them. them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so you do that at step one. Step two is you would go and read the book in its entirety from cover to cover. But quickly, right? Not necessarily quickly. That's that's good to that you ask that. Right. He brings up speed reading as well because speed reading at that time was this huge uh, sort of like self-help thing that everyone was really into. But just like not 
going back to look up words that you don't know or not right. pausing to contemplate, but just really trying to hammer exactly. through the book. Yeah. So as, as he says in the book, like learning at which pace you should read certain texts is one of the skills that he tries to get across. Mm -hmm. um, and so exactly like you said, it's not so much about reading necessarily swiftly. It's just cover to cover reading. You know, don't actually stop to define a, a term. Don't dog ear or mark it up or annotate or highlight or anything like that. Right. You just read it all the way through. Right. In his philosophy, he says that it's better to read a book in its entirety and understand 50% of that book than it is to read 30% of the book and to stop. Mm. Does that jives I mean, with me? Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, the, when the author sits down and writes a book, they have an intimation of the beginning and the end. And if you don't go all the way to the end, you're kind of missing over the whole point of what they were trying to exactly. accomplish. And I think a lot of people out there make the mistake of trying to go slow and truly understand everything that they're reading. And then they get bored with it and they move on to the next right, book. Because right. reading is a skill and reading well like that and actually annotating and going slowly is a skill. And not every book should be met and faced with that level of ardor or like that level mm. of like serious scholarship right you know what i mean right and again that's part of this part of this book is to teach you which books are good for you and which books aren't to pause for a moment on adler's whole technique we'll revisit it in just a sec um carl sagan a lot of people know carl sagan in the science world um he wrote you know co the cosmos mm -hmm. book cosmos and a couple other ones like the demon haunted world and some other amazing texts <clears throat> he there was a video that I was watching one time of him kind of walking around a library space explaining if you were to read one book a week for the rest of your adult life on average to live to about 70 years or so, how many books you would read. And it's a couple thousand, honestly, not very much. Not, not a lot at and all. And a couple thousand books is honestly my entire library, maybe a little, my, my library is probably like three or 4,000 texts. Right. So I don't even, you wouldn't even be able to get through my entire studio space, this entire, the archive space that we've set up in that time frame. So knowing which books to read and read well is important. Sure. And it's okay to pick books up and read them, do a cursory read and then put them back and never have to touch them again, right? Right. Um, yeah, so just to reiterate that whole point. There's nothing worse than reading a book in its entirety and then you know, kind of having that feeling of regret that you wasted all <laughs> that time because it didn't turn out to be what you thought it was gonna be or, or whatever. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so once you do the read from the cover to cover, which is the second reading, um, you, gain an understanding of the book at least half the book or more mm -hmm. and you know you kind of skip the things you didn't know or that were over your head or the definitions or whatever at this point you can choose to dive into it much more deeply annotate mark the book up have a conversation with the author and adler gives techniques for annotating how to annotate books better um, what you should look for if you're reading you know fiction versus history versus a math text versus a history or sure. a philosophy text um he breaks it down into sections uh, and sort of the process of having a conversation with the author and coming to terms with the author and what that looks like. He lays it all out in his book and it's pretty cogent, pretty easy to understand. And if you adopt the techniques, you will be a better reader. And the books that you do decide to dive into that you really feel like you do need to understand and master, you will have a better, a better go at it, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Uh, another thing to say about Adler's philosophy is reading 15 pages a day at the very minimum. So a lot of people out there want to read books, right? They're like, okay, I, I get it. Reading books is awesome. There's utility about reading books versus listening to them on tape. Right. I want to dive into these books. I want to have a conversation with the author and truly master this thing. How do I do that? Adler gives the advice of reading at least at the bare minimum 15 pages a day. Right. If you can read 15 pages a day, you can read a book that's about 150 pages, which is a pretty average sized book in two weeks. And also just speaking for myself, whenever I've gotten to the point where I've read 15 pages, I'm kind of in a flow state where I end up ultimately reading more. Like if I say I'm going to read 15, because yeah. I've practiced this since you've, you've told me about this book, I end up just just going because yeah. I'm already, I've already forgotten about everything else. I'm in the book now. Yeah, and I mean, reading 15 pages a day is a great milestone to start with. Yeah. You know, it's just a good bare minimum. 15 pages a day, you could do that, you know, if you're standing in the line at the grocery store, flip your phone open, you know, open up that PDF, find the page that you're on, read two or three pages in line, you know, read w when you're going to bed or in the bathtub or whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Just 15 pages a day minimum, and you'll, you'll eat through books. Right. Another thing that Adler talks about that I really want to highlight is reading for understanding. We kind of mentioned that. Right. Versus for knowledge or entertainment. Mm -hmm. It's a huge motif of this book. 
shout out to our episode, the discourse of talking about the differences between wisdom, knowledge, and, and experience, which is very similar to this concept. But reading for entertainment is one thing. Reading for knowledge is another, like opening a dictionary and understanding, okay, what does this definition mean? Right. Or, you know, what is the weather like outside? That's kind of reading for knowledge, getting the data and the juice of whatever the thing is. Reading for understanding is improving your life. How can you extrapolate meaning or purpose from this text that will be applicable in your actual life to where you can make changes and become a better, more sovereign or more intelligent or, you know, better uh, morally acclimated individual? That's reading for understanding. It's one of his biggest actual pieces of philosophy that, that he really wants to express in this book. And there's a bunch more too. I know that I'm not, I'm missing some things and there's some topics that, you know, going back on this book review, I might be like, ah, oh, shucks, I totally forgot to talk about this thing. Is it a pretty long book? It's like 200 pages or something. It's not bad. It's not super long, but yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful book. There's a lot going on, a lot of good tips and tricks. And honestly, it's, it's life-changing. And I think it's important right in this modern era because, I mean, it seems like our parents and our parents' parents have a really an easier time, you know, allocating time throughout their day to read. It seems like we struggle with that. I know me personally, like I've struggled with attention span issues. And I think practicing this will not only make you a better reader, but will also enhance your attention span in, on any given task in general. Yeah. And that's also a really good point too. just the attention span thing. I mean, we're surrounded by books in here and, you know, it's a big part of my life to read and study and learn. And even for somebody like me who buys books, is surrounded by them every day, enjoys picking them up and learning. Our social construct and our culture has really overstimulated us and right. given us so many options of consuming media that even I struggle sometimes with the patience to sit down, open a text, and really dive into it. I think that it's unfortunate. It's a positive because we have opportunity to learn so much more because there are lectures out there. Mm -hmm. There's podcasts. There's YouTube video series. There's you know places I can go out on the street on the internet forums, right. at Reddit, like everywhere. You can learn from any anywhere. But I think it's a, a mistake to think that everything that you can learn can be learned outside of books. There's some things that you can only understand when someone has taken the time to codify their perspective over a long textual format. Right. Yeah. There's something, there's some magic there, right. truly, that is lost in just doing audiobooks. And we'll talk about that in mm -hmm. our episode that we, you know, sort of hinted at. Right. But... Yeah, I mean, it's huge. And then as well, to go, the last thing that I'll say on his philosophy in this text to the audience is suspending judgment. So a huge, huge, huge aspect about this book is learning to suspend judgment. What that means is if you did your cursory reading and that's all you did and you put the book back, you can make the judgment that that book wasn't for you. Right. But in an argument or a discourse or a debate with someone, you don't really have the authority to say that you've mastered that text or that idea in order uh, to the degree that you can actually say that it's wrong. Right. Like not, I, not all ideas are going to be for you. Like even your own ideas, you might have an idea suddenly is downloaded into you and you decide, Oh, that's, that's not an idea for me. You can kind of do the same thing with, with books. Right. And so that's a level of judgment that you can make, but, Adler says that we should not make judgments on the character of the text itself. Exactly, unless you've unless fully you've understood mastered it. Yep. it. And that's when you actually realize that that's a text for you, and then you go through the full third reading, and you go through the annotation and all of that when you really do that deep dive. Right. So that's the last thing that I wanted to say. Because you mentioned it's it's difficult to read, and you're not going to read every book like that, not nearly. There's Adler says, I think it's like 1% of all texts in the whole world, should you ever even consider reading to that level? Right. Most texts are good enough just reading cover and to cover. And it's also contextual based on your own idiosyncratic interests. And, exactly. And, yeah. And then, so on that, why is this book important, right? We've given them, we've given the audience, you guys listening and watching, all of the reasons, or I guess all of the, the meat and bones of the text for the most part, but why is it important? Mm -hmm. The reason is when I read it, it really did inspire me to go and read better books again. It kind of woke me up from a, like a slumber state. Mm -hmm. And it also provides you the techniques and the tools to do all this properly. So if you've never learned in school how to do a critical analytic reading of a book, or you don't know how to come to terms with an author, or you don't know what to look for when you're reading a philosophy text, but you really want to get into it, and you're a person who hasn't been in school in forever or... You're just worried. You don't even know how to annotate a book properly. What does that even mean? Right. This is the book for you. Right. For me, it's been important, even though I haven't read it and I'm going to read it. I just didn't have enough time to before this episode. But just from what I've heard about it from you, what I learned was that I shouldn't be hard on myself just because 
I kind of get the gist of a book and just decide I'd, it's not for me. Yeah. Again, not every book is you know, going to be. So there might be a book that like, you know, everyone you know is raving about and then mm -hmm. you, you try to get into it and it's just not resonating with you. And then you're like, oh, what's wrong with me? Like, I, didn't, I didn't like this book yeah. that everybody else I know likes, you know? That's, that is one thing that I, I got out of it, having read the book, for sure, is that there are some books that just aren't for you. But there's also a caveat there. Like, you shouldn't use it as an excuse to not read a book in its entirety. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, reading is kind of like flexing a muscle in your yes. brain. And you should try to get through books that are challenging and difficult for you in order to exercise that's awesome that, that, that you're actually even bringing that up and saying that because that's a huge that is why Adler wrote the book right because he, he gives the metaphor of reading a text that's above your caliber your understanding your pay grade so to speak is akin to trying to literally like lift yourself up and flip yourself upside down by your own bootstraps right by like reaching down and grabbing on your shoelaces and yanking on them hard enough to make you do a backflip it feels like that sometimes yeah. but in wrestling with the great books with the the great pieces of literature shout outs great books behind us in the studio space, wrestling with texts that are above your knowledge and level and experience will flex that muscle and you will get to become a better reader and you just as a person will improve. Literally, it's like magic. Yeah, I've read books that were like beyond my pay grade as you, that's a good <laughs> way to say it. And what I found is that when I went to books that were back to my, what I normally would, would pick up. I was, I, I could get through them easily easier because I had flexed that muscle a little Flex bit. that big boy brain. Exactly. Use your noodle. Right. <laughs> Use your noodle guys. <laughs> yeah. All right guys. So with that being said, um, BJ, can I borrow a copy of how to read a book? <laughs> Absolutely not. But you have three. <laughs> <laughs> three is not enough. No. I suppose Amazon exists, so I, I'll, I think I'll be okay. It's all good. I'm not yeah. that greedy. You yeah. can borrow one for yeah. sure. I'll read it. You do my due one. diligence. Since I did a book review on it, I probably should read it. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of why, I mean, sometimes I have multiple copies of books because of just a love for them and the different prints and the different versions. Sometimes I just, I have them to give away to people. Exactly. So. But with that, if you guys are still here listening, watching, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Please like, comment, subscribe if you think you'd like this type of content in the future. Also share with your friends if you think other people will get a kick out of this. This is our first ever book review episode, so let us know how we did. Uh, tell us how we can improve, what you liked, what you didn't if like. If we inspired you to read the book, please let us know. Yeah, again, any book that we talk about ever on this channel will be linked in the description of mm -hmm. YouTube, and we'll try our best to get it onto all the other platforms as well. If it's not there, jump over to the YouTube video can grab it there and go buy it or whatever you're going to do with it. Don't burn the book though. Don't buy it just to burn it. And with that, we thank you for joining us and continuing the great conversation. <laughs>